But now your international ally is just moving um, on. The British Foreign Secretary David Miliband says that he accepts Georgia was reckless and he takes the war crimes allegations against your country extremely seriously. And even um, the Assistant Secretary of State in the US, Daniel Freed, says that Georgia's attack on Skin Valley was wrong on several levels. I think here we have a very simple answer. And first of all, there might be distinct uh, personal opinions of, you know, important decision makers, important politicians, but at the same time, there is no pattern of an opinion in that time created in that sense. The response that we've had from the beginning was very clear. We were not only open, but demanding international investigation. That could have settled all the questions because we're confident, we are open and we're transparent. What Russia tries to do with the way how it spins this question all over the time is that it diverts attention from very simple facts of reality. It's Russia who invaded Georgia. It's Russia who occupies parts of Georgia. It's Russia who ethnically cleansed, as simple as that and grievous as that, the whole territory of South Ossetia and beyond that, the villages outside of the administrative borders as well. It's very simple. I mean, there were villages with which thousands of Georgians were living. There are none of Georgians who are left. It's an ethnic cleansing. How can you otherwise call that? So we don't speak about these very unfortunate events. All we speak about what actually happened in the minutes of the 7th when they, I mean, actual hostilities in a large scale started. And as we've said, I mean, we'll be open with materials on our side, but more than that, we are eager, we're demanding international investigation of embarrassed nations so that they comprehensively inquire on that. But other than that, I mean, other facts of life which are just, that just there, grievous ones, they are unanswered because Russia manages somehow to spin the focus on a very important facts that happened. Since the end of the USSR, there's been constant conflict in both Abkhazia and South Ossetia. Wouldn't it, would it be so bad if they were now autonomous regions a bit like Kosovo? Oh, Kosovo, first of all, it's not an autonomous region. And then the process that happened in Kosovo was a completely different one. How the UN had been involved in the process, how the, after the return of refugees, referendums have taken place there. What we have in these regions, first of all, during the wars, it was Russia who directly at the time participated in the hostilities. Russia bombed at the time the cities in Abkhazia so that uh, it helped to win the war for the separatists at the time in, in a very direct way. After that, we have 500,000 IDPs and refugees. And if we speak about any which had been cleansed from these territories at that time as well, and now we had the new wave of ethnic cleansing in South Ossetia per se. If there is any fair solution to the process, these people have to be part of this process, which means that the right of return that every human being has when you're expelled from your home has to be respected. They have to have a right of gradual return to their homes and then be part of the political process with which the destiny of these regions will be decided. But the non-Georgians in these regions in Abkhazia and South Ossetia complain that they don't have access to language and that they are, they are subjugated from the sort of Georgian home. I mean, absolute lie. They've had at all times special quotas in the universities. They had television. I mean, it's, it's in the, I mean, it's during Soviet times. What the record of Georgia is, I mean, that's open. In Council of Europe, in EU, everywhere, Georgia is one of the countries which, is, which is, has the best record of being a tolerant country. All national minorities that live in Georgia have you know, a full integration into the society. The plans that we've had for the regions were the widest autonomy that could have been offered to these regions. And by the way, the type of involvement and integration that we are undergoing with Europe, would mean all these standards with which we are transforming into our society would have been a benefit for them as well. Georgia is not an old, closed country with which you know, discrimination of the type can never happen. In hindsight, do you regret invading um, Shinkishvali and Skinvali rather and, um, and launching the attack? I think that the record has to made, uh, be very clear. At no time I will have a bit of a regret for saving independence and sovereignty of my country because I'm absolutely confident that what Russia had and as an intent while it invaded Georgia and not the other way around was a complete takeover of Georgia as a sovereign state. And by the way, President Sarkozy completely confirms to that one saying, what was the intent of Putin? When, as much as he explained to him while he invaded in Georgia and then what, what he wanted to do with not only the president, but then the government of Georgia as well. So saving independence and sovereignty of Georgia to which it is not even a, you know, a task, but then a dream for 200 years now for my people since the time when Russian empire came in and swallowed my country at the time will never be abandoned by the people of Georgia. Just one last question. 
Where does this leave your um, NATO ambitions now? This must be completely off the card. I think it's a very steady process with which there's a full understanding that it will not be a quick process, but it will be a dynamically developing process. So I don't think there are any uh, serious complications in that way. So you still think that one day Georgia will be Absolutely so, absolutely so. Which will bring common benefit to the members of the alliance rather than a benefit to Georgia only.